A New Testament lesson, our second scripture reading is from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. We read this passage not that long ago on Christmas Eve as we gather and often read various passages. We end with this one. It sends us off, so to speak, with the good news of the coming of Christ. And so today we're going to pick up on these verses. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 18. Hear the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from John, from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. As we start a new year, we often hear about people saying that they want to make some changes in their lives. Maybe they want to change a current part of their life, or... They want to start something entirely new. As we begin 2020, not only do we hear people talking about, well, you know, I really need to make a change this year, but now we have people talking about, well, I'd like to set off in some new directions for the decade, for a new decade. Now, how do you actually make some change happen? How do you start off in a new direction for a decade and continue on that path. Now, a lot of people, when they look out at a new year, they say they'd really like to become more active. They want to get better with their exercise. Someone told me that they heard a report this last week from someone that what you need to do if you want to try to become more active and start an exercise program is start with just one push-up a day. You know, this, this is basic behavior modification 101. You know, have some success. Reinforce yourself. So you do one push-up. Great, you started. And maybe you do one push-up the next day. And then you work your way up to two push-ups. You, you keep it simple. You start small. You gain some success. And then hopefully you can build some momentum toward actual change and maybe a new direction for the year and possibly even for the decade. Well, I think about that when it comes to our faith journeys. Here you are. You have shown an interest. You are here in this worship service on this Sunday, and I'm sure we're thinking, well, what What changes in my life of discipleship do I need to make? Are there some changes I can make? Or better yet, are there some new directions I need to head off on? How do I do that? Where do I start? 
where's that simple place, that simple place where you can begin and just build up some speed? See, that, that becomes very difficult for those of us in a faith community because we have had so much history So many experiences that it's very difficult for us to identify where would where would be that place of one push-up? You know, where would be that place I could begin to make change or start in a new direction and I could build from there? See, we we have so much history. We've been maybe in various environments where the Bible's been studied and we have differing views on the Bible and the authority of the Bible in our lives. We have various theological views that have developed and maturated over time. And and so maybe we struggle with some of those views. Oh, and then we have the history within the church, the institution of the church, and the relationships. Maybe some of those haven't gone the best. And you start laying all this on top of each other, and it's very difficult for us to say, well, where are you going to find that spot to get some traction? Where do you begin? I was recalling my experience when I was coming into the life of a church as a member. Uh, I had to go to a two-year confirmation program. Some of you maybe can relate to this. And we went Saturday mornings for two years when we were in seventh and eighth grade. And the senior pastor of our church, a very bright, very intellectual gentleman, led the class. And so, basically, we were studying the Westminster Shorter Catechism, the questions and answers, and we had to memorize these. It was intense. And for a 12- and 13-year-old, some of the theology became a little complicated, and so there it was, these layers being being put on top. But there's another issue. Um, Unfortunately, the senior pastor did not have class management training. So he was trying to control a bunch of 7th and 8th graders on Saturday morning. And I even remember as a 12-year-old just kind of working this through in my head, he would become very irritated with some of the kids in the class. And a couple times he became so upset that he kicked them out. And he told them, I never want you to come back. Now I thought about that in a couple ways. First, I thought, oh, that's an option. You can leave and not come back on Saturday morning. <laughs> but, but then I got a little deeper. I, I got a little deeper, and I thought, what? Well, this, this is how we're joining the church. So if you're told, leave and never come back, are they ever going to join a church any time in their lives with that experience? See, we have so much that has been put on us through our experiences in faith communities. And so when we we start a year and we say, you know, I want to make a change. I want to go in a new direction. Where where do we go to? We're we're in a bit of a a fog. I believe the first chapter of John gives us a foothold. And and there's this verse. It's verse 16. It's, It's short. And that's what we need. We're going to keep this concise. We're, we're going to follow the one or two push-up approach here to your spiritual formation. And if we look at verse 16 in the first chapter of John, it goes like this. From his fullness, we have been given grace upon grace. Okay, let's keep it simpler. That's ten words. Let's go down to three. Grace upon grace. I believe that might be our point of gaining some traction in how we bring about some change in new directions. And I'm going to give you just a little bit different interpretation of grace upon grace. I believe it's grace for your life, within your life, and then it's grace that's built upon that that is expressed outwardly toward others. Grace Upon grace. Now, in this first chapter, we get just enough context. So it doesn't get confusing. I don't want to put other layers on you. We get just enough context because we're told 
that in the coming of Christ, who brings great, we have life, and that life is light in the darkness. So, so we begin with grace within our lives, that light in that fog, from all the experiences we've had in a faith community, we have, we have grace that's light in, in the fog and allows us to maybe just identify that one place, that, that one, one place that you need grace to flow to you. It's, it's just kept you in the dark, so to speak. It could be a, a belief of some kind, a relationship, an experience you had with a senior pastor who kicked you out of a class sometime. What, what, what is it? And, and what, if, what if grace is allowed? What, what, what if you work on allowing grace to flow there? Uh, a definition I like of grace, a very more common definition, is holding things lightly. What if you what if you're able to hold that lightly, that experience or that belief or something to do with your faith formation that has just been a hang-up? What, what if you just, in this year, allow yourself to hold it lightly? And, and see, then it's upon grace. And again, just a little bit of context because John says it's the glory of God. See, glory is light that cannot be contained. That's how I would define it. So, so then it's grace upon grace. We become that light that cannot be contained. And we show grace outside of our lives. See, so often we have individuals. We have whole groups of people. Uh, we, we have situations that you know, we have a problem with. We, we want to hold so closely what we have, and we don't want to lose anything. We want to hold it tightly. And... And see, grace outside of our lives is holding it lightly. Uh, what, what it is that we think we have to protect and keep others away from, or, or how we can't be involved or reach out or, or do something or do more because, because of what we might lose. See, what if grace, there's a spot of grace that starts to be expressed outside of yourself? Grace upon grace. Grace. All right, we want the one or two push-up approach. So can, can, can you think of that one or maybe two things? Uh, what, what, what would it be within your life, the fullness of God's grace within your life, uh, to that spot that you could just become lighter with and even maybe let it go this year? Can you identify that? And then what would it look like outside of your life to where, where you need to have light shine, where God places you, the glory of God, light expanding, and it ends with seeing God. See, where does God need to be seen in your, your circle of life? You know, how, how can you start to show some, some grace? And maybe it's holding what you have a little more lightly or holding an opinion of somebody or a group or a race more lightly that allows you to be that light. Tomorrow is Epiphany, and I think this, this can be our, our guiding star. Um, this, this grace upon grace, one or two things, where we're going to start, where we'll make the change, and most importantly, where we head in new directions. And my prayer would be we do that individually and as a community. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.